Yeah, somebody stopped me at the, at the Staples and, uh, you know, I was walking and then I see somebody's like tapping my back and I'm like, he's like, I'm so sorry, you know, you look like that guy, I cannot say his name. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, uh, yeah, everybody says that because, <laughs> he's like, yeah, that guy played on the Graceland and I said, yeah, everybody says that. But after a while I said, no, yeah, that's me. He's like, oh my God, I want to take a lesson. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I was born in Johannesburg. I was born in Alexandra Township, which is uh, is the town away from the Johannesburg city, um, uh, Alexandra. And then I grew up in Soweto because my family moved to uh, to the township of Soweto, which is another 45 minutes away from the city. So uh, I grew up there, and I grew up in a house uh, where I live with 17 people. And it was a four-room house, two bedrooms, one dining room and a kitchen. Bathroom is outside. And uh, all these people, we used to share kitchen. Sometimes like, you know, six or seven people sleep in the kitchen after dinner. Some people sleep on top of the table, other under the table, and wherever you can find a space to just close your eyes. It was, it was tough. And eating, when my grandmother cooks the food, everybody's got to be home because if you miss the meal, you have to wait until next <laughs> next day, and it's that person is not going to be happy. You know, he's going to be angry at everybody. You know, I mean, it was it was a disaster be, between what was going on uh, with the with the government, and then you know with people being struggling, and then some bad guys also. You know, like people getting hurt, and uh, it, it, it was a mess. I just took the message from Nelson Mandela because this man was in prison for us for many, many, many years. But he was not a problem. He was just there, tried to talk for his people. And when he came out, he was a good man. And I said, I wanted to be like him, but playing music. You know, just suffer for your, for, for your gift, you know, because this is a gift and I don't have an instrument, but I got to figure out how to get the instrument or join any bands around so I can, you know, and stay focused and be consistent with everything. But I grew up in a musical house. And then also to in the township, there was so much music. People are passing by singing, you know, church stuff, and then also singing like traditional South African music, playing drums. There was always music, music all the time. Let me see if I remember, you know, it was uh, uh, my mother. <laughs> And then there were some other grooves like um, the traditional Zulu. visited South Africa in 1985 and then somebody just gave him the the, uh, the the tapes of some of the stuff that I played on and Paul loved that and then like he, he was asking who are these people but at that time I was working as a mechanic not n not even knowing how to fix cars but just working there so I can help my mother who was uh, uh, ill. She was getting sick and uh, so I stopped playing for a minute but I always had my bass with me at the job. And then my boss he says to me, hey, uh, do you know Paul Simon? And I said, oh no. I was so scared and I'm thinking, who's Paul Simon? I've never heard any, anything about Paul Simon. Who's Paul Simon? He says, no, relax. 
it's okay, it's fine. <laughs> you know, Paul Simon is a singer from America. And I'm like, Paul Simon is a singer from America? I don't know him. And then he starts singing the songs, Sounds of Silence, you know, uh, me and Julio. You know, in the township, uh, nobody dance for a slow song. You know? So I didn't know. But finally he said, okay, do you know the song called Mother and Child Reunion? And I said, yeah, I know the song. I've heard the song, and the guy is from Jamaica. He says, oh, no, 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 it's not from Jamaica. It's from America. Maybe Jamaica, Queens. And, uh, but he said, hey, listen, take the money and go take the bus, go to the studio, bring your bass with you. And uh, then I took my bass. I didn't even have a case. I have, like, sneakers with my toes sticking out. And, uh, and the boss said, listen, I'll give you the money, take the bus and go, because Paul Simon is my f favorite musician. So go. And I go to the studio, man. Whew, it was unbelievable. There were so many people in the studio. I didn't know what was going on. And we meet Paul. Paul introduced himself to me. And I uh, was so nervous. My English was not very good. I didn't really speak very much. I was always quiet, you know, but thinking like, this is not going to be good and I'm playing fretless and they're not going to like that because I'm the only one who plays fretless in South Africa. And the reason why I play fretless, I didn't have money to buy a bass uh, that was fretted because everything was so expensive, but the fretless was cheap and nobody wanted to buy it because he didn't have um, the lines. And then I took the bass, go to the studio, and uh, after meeting Paul, we start jamming, you know. Paul would ask us to play some grooves and then stop us, trying to figure out how we can join in in the groove so you can, you know, create. And for us, it was like, whoa. I never played one song for like five hours <laughs> in one day, you know. So, but uh, at that time, and I said, man, I think this is a great opportunity because I'm the only one who plays the fretless and I'm not saying much, everybody in the studio, they're coming up with different ideas, you know, suggesting this and that. And me, I'm quiet and I'm nervous because and I'm thinking, you know, I might have not good news after this. They might tell me, I don't come back tomorrow. <laughs> but the engineer went crazy. Every time I play Roy Haley, he would be like, man, I've never had any bass sound like that. So he just made me feel really comfortable and... Uh, and then I saw the opportunity, like, hey, listen, less is more. Play the groove and just listen to what's going on around you. And, and that's how I got an opportunity. And that was not all. The best part, when he wrote a, lot, a letter for the uh, passport department to give me the passport so I can come to New York and finish up the rest of the track, that's when I knew this was, was serious. Never been on the plane, but the very first plane ride, it was like 17 hours. You know, it was 17 hours, and I said, where the heck is America? You know, <laughs> I mean, I'm like standing on the plane. They're like, sit down, say, have some, you know. Uh, I mean, it was, it was unbelievable, it was really unbelievable, and that changed my life. As soon as I, uh, we got to New York, it was way too big for me. I mean, I remember so confused at the hotel. I've never had a hotel room. I've never stayed in a hotel. You know, so the hotel is like, you have a shower, you have a, a bath, you know. Everything was there. And I'm like, wow, in the township, no, you take a shower outside. So this, it was unbelievable. And I look at Paul, I keep saying thank you to him. Even, I still do that today. Like when I finish solo, call me out solo, I go to him and say thank you because he gave me the opportunity. And, uh, of course, I love America because as a kid, when I was 14 years old, my dream was to come to America. By listening to all these great bass players and records, you know, I, and I said, nah, I want to be there. I want to learn how to play like these guys. My uh, really biggest favorite bass player was Abel Laboreal, which is I met him and I did so much work with him and, uh, you know, workshop and we talk on the phone. And, um, of course, Stanley Clark, I met Stanley Clark uh, at the event, and he was like, you know, tuning his bass. And then so I went to him and I asked him how to, how to play the, the, the upright bass. And he said, first, you have to know how to hold it. <laughs> and that was a good lesson. And then, you know, of course, Victor Bailey lived in Brooklyn. And uh, somebody gave him my number because he didn't have my number. I didn't have his number. 
But when somebody gave Victor's my number, Victor called me and Victor was speaking Zulu and I thought he was a South African. And then I was clicking, going crazy, and then say, wait a minute, this is Victor Bailey, you know. Uh, um, yeah, I've been to South Africa one day with Hugh Masekela because Victor played with Hugh when Victor was like 19 years. He just came out from Berkeley and he was playing with Hugh Masekela. And uh, we became friends and he uh, took me to the South African restaurant, Victor, and um, I miss him to death. And when I moved here, I told him I moved to Pennsylvania. He's like, yeah, man, you're moving to a great state, you know, you're going to love it. And so people like that and Gerald Weasley, who's a great, 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 amazing musician and a good, good human being. And um, just, just a bunch of a lot of people. Matt Garrison, not a great bass player. You know, Victor Wooden. You know, I mean, just all these bass players, they're my friend. There's no bass players that I don't like. I mean, I like every bass player because it's a big responsibility to, uh, uh, ability to be a bass player. So to uh, now listen to all these great bass players playing, it's amazing. I had a chance to hang out with Phil Lesh, Jack Cassidy, oh my, my hero when I played with Mickey Hart, the, the Planet Drum. Uh, I didn't know anything about Grateful Dead, but by the time the tour ends, I knew more about him and I love their music. So now I'm using the Labella strings for in case you guys don't know, and then I'm using the NS design. This is a uh, 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 oh, they have too many names, I don't know which, but uh, um, I'm, I'm loving this instrument because it's amazing. You know, I can do all kinds of stuff that I do, like... America, who doesn't? You know, this this is the best country, you know, I'll tell you why, you know, I've traveled all over the world. This is the best country because why? It teaches you to work hard. You cannot be lazy living in America. I can be lazy in Africa and, and keep asking for cigarette or whatever that I need and people keep giving you without any job. Not in this country. In this country, you work hard for, for the, life, uh, the living, the way you want to live. You know, the fact that I have now my daughters in college, it, it's just amazing. I wish I had this opportunity uh, when I was young to come here and go to school and study and then maybe play the bass better than I play now. So this country gives you the opportunity, but it's not easy. <laughs> you got to really fight and know what you're doing 
get up every day, know what you're doing every day. You don't wake up and say, oh, what am I doing today? <laughs> you know, you have a plan. You know, so this, this is really the uh, best country on the planet. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just so happy to be here. Yeah. 